Hi, welcome back. Today on the video, we're going to talk about what is the difference between a traditional IRA and a 401k. And specifically what I'm going to talk about is really the differences about these and why you probably don't want to use them. But my clients ask me all the time, so I need to handle this question. So you're really clear. What's a traditional IRA? What's a 401k? Get ready. Let's take some notes. <laughs> So in this video, we're going to talk specifically about a traditional IRA and a 401k. I don't know how many people, thousands and thousands of clients have asked the difference. And there's a subtle difference, but you have to know the difference. And really what you're going to learn when I'm done with this video is you might not want either one. How about that? We're going to talk about the differences. We're going to talk about which one you should use in retirement. We're going to talk about which one's a better tax planning vehicle. There is one that's better. And the big one that I enjoy the most is should you keep them traditional or should you self-direct? All right, let's roll. So first of all, let's talk about the differences. A traditional IRA is an individual plan. So you as an individual, as like I'm talking you, not a company. In my channel, I talk a lot about being incorporated. That is not what this is. This is just you as an individual can put in money into this vehicle. Now you can only put in 6,000 until you're 50 and 7,000 after. So it's a slow go and you haven't paid taxes yet. So you get it tax free. So it's a deduction on the year you put your money in. So let's just say you're 42 and you put 6,000 and that's a deduction on your taxes. And if you're 50, then you put in seven. So it's a slow growth, but it does give you some tax benefits as it grows. The challenge and risk is that later at 70, it's a mandatory required distribution. When you have to start taking it out, you don't know what the tax rate's gonna be. So you got a huge risk at the end of that thing. Let's just say in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, you put, well, heck, in the, even in your 60s, that you put, that's 50 years. For 50 years, you're gonna put, you know, six, 7,000 away. Let's just call this hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then as you take it out, you don't know what the taxes are gonna be. Mm, that's a risky proposition. And, you know, any financial planner who tells you that that's cool isn't telling you the whole story. Now let's go back to the other one, 401k, what's that? That's an employer plan. So that means you're only gonna get one of these if you work for somebody. So it's a benefit tax-wise to the employer and it's a benefit tax-wise to you. But is it the best vehicle as you grow your wealth over time? So in a 401k, you're going to work for the company, they're gonna give you the requirements of their 401k. You can match, you can actually put up to 19,500 into 401k. So a little better than an IRA, traditional IRA. And then once you're 50, if you didn't do enough when you were younger, you can add an extra 6,500 as a catch up from 50 on. But again, the big one on that is very similar to the traditional. You don't know what the tax rate is when you're 70 and have to take it. And let's be honest, a lot of people start taking at 59 and a half. So if you start pulling your money out, I mean, yeah, the tax rate in that 10 year period between 59 and a half and 70 could be a lot, but you're forced to take it at 70. So I just think there's an unknown variable in both of these vehicles that you don't have to take. So does that mean not do them or does that mean do something else? I'm going to say, and again, I'm not a financial planner. I can't tell you what to do. I just not a fan, not a fan of all the other vehicles and all the other cool things like a Roth IRA, way better vehicle that goes in after tax and it grows deferred and tax free, even a solo 401k. So a solo 401k is when you're the employer because you own the company and you want to set this up for you and your family. Family, that's a better one. But the Roth is what I call the king of the kingdom. It's the best one because you've already known the tax going into it and you get to grow that thing as long as you want, how old as you want, and it's tax-free growth. It's phenomenal. So you already know my answer on that. But let's get back to these two. There's still really, there's a lot of questions my clients have about the difference between the traditional as an individual plan and the 401k. You can have both. A lot of people don't know that. You can have both. You can have the employee plan and you say, well, I want to put more away and then you're going to put it away. But if I look at your overall portfolio, I mean, you got the same thing kind of going, right? With big risks at the end. Now let's talk about which one is going to give you a better benefit. Clearly, because you can put more into the 401k, you're going to be able to put more away. You have more tax benefits during that year. So that is the better one. Obviously you can put 19,500 versus 6,000 better tax benefit as you grow them. Now let's get to, should they say traditional and can you self-direct? Cause it's really a, can you self-direct the individual plan, the IRA, the traditional IRA, yes, can be self-directed by a proper custodian. And we call them alternative custodians. There's only about seven to 10 really good ones in the United States. Only a few in Canada, only one I found in Australia and 
haven't found them really in the rest of the world. That's again why the U.S. has such amazing tax code, 80,000 pages of tax code. It's awesome. A lot of our individual and international clients have companies inside the United States, by the way, for these very benefits just so you know. So let's go back to self-directing. In a 401k, if you still work for the company, you can't self-direct it until you quit. Once you quit, there's a certain time period. I think it's about 90 days. Again, each plan is different. So we have great experts on our team. You can work with us directly. You can comment and say, hey, I have one of those 401ks. Can I have it reviewed by your team? And we can just start a whole you know, conversation of what you do over there. Now, the one thing you can do in a 401k that's very cool because you're putting 19500 away is by year four or five, you can actually take a loan from it. So let's just say there's a real estate project or there's a business you want to buy. You can go back to your employer and say, hey, employer, I'd like to take a loan up to $50,000 is traditionally the amount. And you can loan against it to go buy some other kind of asset that that can't do. Because remember, both of these vehicles are stock market centric. So you're going to get bonds and mutual funds and stocks and those kind of things. The problem also is typically a financial planner of their choosing is the person who manages for you, not you. And you say, well, I don't want to manage it. I know, but there's self-directed ways that you have more control of your decision making. So again, the 401k, just to finish that off, if you do take that loan, there is an interest payment on it. It's low, it's a couple points, but you do have to pay it back right? Before you quit that job, you can't just keep that loan out there, but there is some benefit to it, right? So there's a little bit of a benefit. So before I get to the self-directing, I really want you to subscribe. If you're enjoying this content and you want more and more content of this kind, then I want you to subscribe and also sharing comments helps. Our team is highly engaged on a daily basis to all the videos we do every day. And we use those to come back and do more videos for you. So ask proper questions, really engage, like we're right here. So let's talk about self-directing to wrap this up. It's gonna be phenomenal. So here's why I love self-directing, is you get to choose. Maybe you wanna go do real estate. Maybe you want to buy a business. I have some people, last year I have a client who came to me from Texas and he found a Ford dealership. So we need about a million dollars and you can have half of it, but we're not gonna make it because of COVID and all the shutdowns and everybody stopped buying vehicles. This is in March and April. And they wanted a million for half of it. And I said, wait for it, wait for it. I mean, COVID really didn't hit economically for a while. So by July, and we closed at end of July, we got half of the Ford dealership for $500,000. Now, the reason I bring up that story is how was it funded? Well. I got some ownership, just like I do, because I'm a little shark too. And the guy who found it, I taught him how to do it. But here's what he did. He went out and he got $500,000 of OPM, other people's money. A lot of that OPM was retirement money. It was people's old 401k. So when you self-direct your 401k, like we have one client who self-directed their 401k and took 100,000 of it, and they were 100,000, and they got a 10% what's called convertible note. So they can either just out of the 100,000 every year make 10,000, or they can convert and become an equity partner in three years. So cool stuff, like that's how sharks play. That's how investors play. But if you just keep it not self-directed and you keep it with the financial firm, you're still gonna be in bonds and mutual funds and boring sucks. And the bigger part is you're not in any control of it. So if you want to really guide and direct your portfolio, self-direct your 401k, self-direct your IRA, you have way, way, way many choices. So I mean, from buying businesses, gas and oil, I know people that have bought gold. I know people who have self-directed into digital currency. I know people who have self-directed into cattle. I have huge cattle ranchers because I am in Northern Nevada. And they've actually bought cattle because that's an asset, believe it or not. So some of you that are out there going, this is not real, it is real. So here's what's gonna happen when you go into a financial institute. You're gonna share this video or parts of it and they're gonna say, oh, that can't be done. Notice their words, that can't be done, right? Now, they really will probably say, we don't do that but you're interpreting it as it can't be done. That's not true. Financial institutes can't do this, right? Custodian institutes can do it. It's a very different thing. So the way I want you thinking about my work and our conversation is there's like just in medicine, there's traditional and alternative medicine. Well, there's traditional finance, there's alternative, and I'm an alternative expert. So if you want the traditional stuff, keep listening to Susie Arman, Dave Ramsey, and good luck. If you wanna be a millionaire, and by the way, I love both of those two people, they love me, we're all fabulous, but they don't promise millionaire status, so don't confuse us. If you wanna be a millionaire, you stay right here, and what I'm gonna have you do is go take my personality test. So it's a financial personality test. It's a little quiz, it takes about 30, maybe 45 seconds if you're slow. You're gonna click, 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 and find out who are you? 
right? What personality financially are you? There's people who are super conservative. There's lifestyle junkies. They make it, spend it, make it, spend it, make it, spend it. There's people who are, have lazy assets. They just conserve everything they have, but they're not making any interest. There's people who are overpaying taxes. I don't know who are you. Let's go find out. I want you to click on the link below. Once you take the quiz, I'll be popping back on a video to you to tell you exactly what to do based on your personality and what to do next, which is even more important.